And here we are with the last match of Valakut in a league. Uh, let's see, this hand is... Mwah. Excellent. Yeah, this is just, you know... We just get to ramp twice and hopefully we draw another ramp spell and they take two damage. But it might we don't even need it to take two damage. Because this hand we can play out where... Uh, we just have mono mountains, and the seventh land is gonna trigger the Valakut and deal them three. So even if I'm playing against the deck that keeps the life total high, this is gonna take too much damage. I do have to think about how to sequence my plays here, and I think I'll lead on Cinderglade. Mm. Or maybe I can lead on Valakut, and then I can fetch Stumping Ground. That's my other line. But then I still won't be able to cast Explore into a Ram spell. Yeah, I think I'll just lead on Cinderglade. In case I'm against a deck where I don't want to be fetching Stumping Ground. Because I take too much damage. Okay, I'm against Harden Scales. Ooh, and they have uh, the two best cards already. So that's scary. So I'm hoping... Oh no! Okay, okay, this is fine then. So I'm gonna get a mountain here. Yeah, I think now we can raise them. At least if I hit another ram spell. And I did. Okay, so actually next turn I have lethal now. So I get to play two lands here. So I'll play Valakut and Cinderglade. And I'm not gonna cast my search yet. And you'll see next turn we're just gonna fetch for a mountain, search for tomorrow for Cinderglade, and cast Cape Shift. So we just have a straight up turn 4 kill. And it's not even that unlikely that they would also have a turn 4 kill. But, uh, search for, oh yeah, search for mountain and then fetch for Cinderglade. And then we can deal 3 with the Valakut. This type of, ki like, this type of uh, um, kill doesn't come up that often. Where like you just you know you have the seventh land you have the seven land escape shift kill but the seventh land is the one that deals them the three damage you need, but sometimes it does come up and it's nice to identify when it does so you can sequence correctly around it. Uh, okay, sacrifice these six. Do we just get stumping ground, stumping ground, stumping ground, sheltered ancient? I mean dig it and buttons. And I think my cat is uh, entering the room now. We'll maybe have a uh, featured guest here. Yep. Say hello to mister. Okay, so this matchup against Hardened Scales. Uh, this is why we want to kind of soft transform into a control deck. Uh, we don't want the relics, they don't do anything. And we're gonna board lower on scape shifts. And what we wanna do is to, to have a braids, angers, nature's claim, and reclamation sage. Uh, we don't really care for any of the creatures since they're just gonna be able to go over the top of Bailoth and Thrag Tusk. That's what the deck is designed to do. Um, they, they don't really care. Also, they can just kill us with infect damage to the life gain, doesn't really matter. And the tracker, I don't think we need a card advantage engine, because Lightning Bolt is pretty good against that deck. So, just ramping up into Valakut triggers is just a very viable strategy against them. Um, so I don't want to just cut all my scape shifts and leave that as is, because I'll, I'll prefer to um, shave some ram spells if I shave scape shift. So I'm gonna leave one or two scape shifts and cut out uh, a ram spell or two. So I'm just gonna try and figure out like which which is which here. I think I want three anger, but I'm not even sure if that's correct. In this matchup? Maybe it's not. Anyway, the ram spells I want to cut are again explore and fast seek. I'm gonna be on the draw. So fast seek is worse. And I think 
because I'm on the draw, I'd rather have the extra ramp spell than escape shift. And I think on the play, I'm gonna s switch it up, but then cut the two explorers and leave all three five six. Uh, I think this hand is mulligan. Ink of the Gods is not a premium interaction piece. Like, there's definitely some decks where you would keep this hand, but I'm also on the draw, so I'm, I would definitely mulligan this. Ugh, this hand is not very good either, but I'm gonna keep this. Because at least we have like rampant lands and we just need uh, we just need some gas. We also don't have two ramp pieces, but I don't think it gets much better by mulliganing to, to four. Or to five, I mean. Valakut is a deck that doesn't work that well on a few number of cards. Because the pro wow. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Whoa. <laughs> Opponent is really going off here. Okay. Oh, that's such a good draw. Oh, wait, it's not. I lied. Because um, there's a the welding jar. Oh, I forgot about that. If I go... I think I have to go upkeep killer over here. Or maybe wait until... Yeah, even better. I wait until they, they cast anything. And they respond to that. Okay. This is anything. to make a 1-1 one, one, and then regenerate with a welding jar. Alright, we need to draw another removal spell. <laughs> if we do, we might be okay. I think now we're just dead though. That's just the nature of this deck. Like, now they activate and they can make two servos. They can even put a counter on a nexus, if they have, even if they have no gas. And obviously we have no gas, so. I, our starting hand was not very good. There's a chance I should just like mulligan to five and hope that I hit multiple removal spells. But it's not like this deck isn't resilient enough that multiple removal spells won't. You know, that multiple removal spells would like to be good enough. Here they do get to make some more servos, and this just goes off like <laughs> it's just an army in a can, animation module, and steel over here. Um. Get to block first. And then sec. Get a basic mountain. Anger? I hope to search for tomorrow. I'm almost dead here. And now, no longer is Primeval Titan a good draw. Because I just get to cast a bolt, but I don't think that's good enough. Like bound worker. So I guess they're going to attack with Nexus here. Because they attack for four. And then... Yeah, they're not really in a spot where they can... Um, no, they attack for five. Oh yeah, because they have hardened scales, obviously. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, I, I just take a ton of damage here. I forgot about the hardened scales being in play this whole time. Uh, and I'm dead. Okay. Oh, that's a very uninspiring draw. So, underplay. One thing about Explorer though is that it helps me draw my sideboard cards. Um, so I actually think I'm a little bit hesitant to cutting both Explorers. I'm just gonna do this. It is worse underplay though, because I have that that one less card, and I don't have the Bradix to cycle as well. Um, but I do like that it can. It, also, the fact that it can ramp me and still let me leave up one of these on turn two is pretty key. But man, that uh, building jack got us. This is a very interactive hand. I'm gonna keep it. It's not amazing. Uh, but it at least has all the interactive pieces. I wonder if I should just shock myself here on turn one. I think that's not necessary. Because I don't need to cast fast League turn two. And yeah, they might just lead on this. Where I am just going to cast Vasik. Ooh. Okay. N drawing the Valakut is actually pretty huge. Um, so I'm definitely going to find Sheltered Thicket here. Because that's the one I don't want to draw. And I can just try and build up towards this. Uh, with time. 
Do I use bolt or a braid here? I think I use bolt. Wait, does that make sense? They don't have... Yeah, they, they don't actually have... Um, what's it called? Cranial plating in the deck? Ooh, hardened scales, okay. Well, I have the Nasus Claim ready for that one. But yeah, Bolt and a Braid are very close to each other in this matchup. Obviously, it's one costs a lot, one less. But the, the, what I'm saying is that there's not that many non creatures effects you can braid. But sometimes they'll also make something big, I guess, where it's really nice to have a braid. So I think it's it's fine. Also, it seems like we have the mana. But that's not really a choking point here. Ballista. Okay, in response, I'm gonna kill off your hardened scales. So now I just have a. Where's this version from? I've never seen this artwork. It's a Magic Online promo thing? Now we just have a 1-1. One, one. And an animation module. See, that's the thing we can upgrade. And... Which I might just end up upgrading. Ooh. Maybe I shouldn't, though. It doesn't really do anything, right? Like, worst case scenario is that like they play land and put a counter on a ballista. Yeah, I'm just gonna wait. But now we just need to draw any land and we just take over the game with this Titan. Like this is the why we can transform into a control deck. Is that the Titan is just the perfect control win condition when you're against a deck where Lightning Bolt is good. Because this is just gonna cast a, a billion Lightning Bolts. Over the course of the game. So I can definitely take two damage here. I also wanna make sure I leave up some instant speed removal to not get destroyed by Ravager. See what happens here. Hang up back for two. You got it. Mm, I kind of want to cast removal spell here. Yeah, maybe I'll just. No, wait, hold on. Okay, so how can I lose? If I draw land now and I cast Titan, I will get Valakut Mountain. Yeah, I actually get two triggers. So I get to shoot down the hangar back and the walking ballista. And then they go Ravager and they put a bunch of counters and stuff. And I definitely need to keep the Abrade. Okay. Yeah, I'm just gonna hold on to the Abrade. Mountain? Forest. Okay, that's less good, but it's still fine. Um, this w We can't get... If I drew a basic mountain there, I would fetch Cinderglade. I'm still gonna do that. And I would get Valakut and Mountain. Because that's two triggers, and I'll have two, two Valakuts ready. I think I'm still gonna s get the two triggers now. Because the only way I can get I can trigger my Valakut now is to get two mountains. So I'm just gonna do that. Um, and there'll be two triggers anyway. So I get to kill the Hangarback Walker and the Walking Ballista. And I'm pretty sure I can't die. But I should probably make that bath right about now. No and no. Since things are, since they come into play at the same time, uh, the Valakut will trigger twice. Even though I had four mountains when I played my Premier Titan, so I ha there's going to be two Thopters. And let's see, Ravager will create two more tokens when it gets played, or and when it sacrifices stuff. So it'll be. Oh, okay. Well, we finished 4-1 in the league. So that was cool. I love Valakut. It's just great. Uh, I just want to see if I die to Ravager. Uh, it would make two tokens. So it would be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8 with the Ravager itself. So it just deal me 9 damage. I'll be okay. Oh, wait. There's also the module. 10 damage. But that's just the explosiveness of this deck. Like, I'll, if they draw a Ravager here, I'll take 10 damage. That's ex absurd. I think so, right? Two servos, Mox Opal, animation module, um, the Ravage itself, Akbound Worker counts twice because of modular, one Thopter, no, it's only nine damage. Okay. Well, um, instead, they didn't have that, and I, it's almost impossible not to untap it from Evil Titan when you play Titan. So when you play Titan, the game is just over, which is why you don't really need the escape shifts. Uh, and as you can see, this game, the scapeshift wouldn't even have been good. Because I had six lands, right? I would have to wait e even longer in order for the scapeshift to do anything. 
Because also, it wouldn't do anything with seven lands. So, I mean, I would have removal spells to buy time, so it wouldn't die immediately. But I would also take a lot longer to kill my opponent if I had Scape Shift instead of Titan here. Uh, so, this is just why I don't like Scape Shift that much in uh, in a lot of matchups post board. And which is why I don't call the deck Red Green Titan Shift. Because I just, I mean, the Scape Shift is just whatever. I mean, it's very good against combo, but. Yeah, and and it's pretty good against control, but I don't think it's it's the most important part of the deck. All right, well I hope you enjoyed these matches with Valakut. Uh, I do get a lot of bad rap for the deck being simple, but I uh, I certainly enjoy it, and I think that. I mean, it's not like it. It's not like you don't have any decisions, and it's not like it's extremely easy to play at a high level. Um. But it being simple means that I just have room to focus on these decisions. And you saw me being very articulate. And still mess up in some spots. Um, so, I, I think that... I think that the notion of some decks that are easy to play is just... I mean, it's just BS. Like, uh, I, I just don't think that's how magic works. But oh well, hope you, you enjoyed this, these videos. And please let us know if you enjoyed the replay comment, uh, the replay commentary or the live commentary more. Uh, or if you just vastly prefer arena videos, uh, and we can uh, try and tailor t tailor the the content to your tastes. Is what I'm saying. Yep. All right. Uh, bye.